Hi guys, hi guys, hi guys, hi guys. Hi guys, hi. Oh, hi. Welcome back. If you like whatever I share, just subscribe. Show that you're interested. Comment, ask me questions, let's interact. It's the digital world. Hi guys, so, my name is Doreen. I have been hosting on Airbnb for six years. I have been hosting short term rentals because it's just not Airbnb. It's an Airbnb, it's on um, booking.com, it's on all these platforms that you can think of that uh, do accommodate short term uh, rentals. I've been doing it in six years and I'm a super host. Not me bragging, but I'm a super host and it's uh, something that I've wanted to talk about for a minute now. And I've had a lot of questions, but I always feel like it's not sufficient if I just respond to one of the questions. It's easier if I just go on a whole topic and then you'll find this video at any point and get to know what I do. I have a script and questions here, so I'm just going to look at the questions one at a time again so that I can just go straight to the point. So first, I finished university and then after finishing university, I got my first job in Arusha. Arusha is a different uh, space. If you're, if you're not Tanzania, then you know Dar es Salaam is like the main city and I've lived, grown, loved everything in Dar es Salaam. So this time around, when I got a job in Arusha, my first instance was uh, maybe you can just start an Airbnb. So I made sure that the first apartment that I go in uh, is, is a two bedroom apartment so that I could lease in the other room. Uh, I, I'm sure by now you've already started questioning yourself, like, how do you live with strangers? How is that even possible? How can you go about it? But let me just put it out there. I have a curious mind and I think I'm an adventurous person. So I love meeting new people. And I think the first thing that goes in my mind if I meet a new person is their kind. So at least it doesn't stop me from uh, getting to know people or starting to think of harm instead of just kindness. So that you should know by now that the first thing that just blurs in my mind is that we are all human beings and we're all kind like that's what we all have so i started the first house and i got into a two-bedroom apartment and then i started leasing the other bedroom by that time my room did not have as much i was sleeping on the floor i only had like a mattress and everything but the room of the guests was like fully equipped it had like a bed it had like everything so the first investment i did instead of doing it on my room was to the other room then I started living with clients. By that time, I did not have a good space. I, I think the first and few clients that I had uh, came to a place where I did not even have like sofa seats and all that. So humble beginning. So after the first place, I moved, I think after like six, eight months, I moved to another apartment, which was now a very well-equipped serviced apartment. And then again, it was the same ideology. So I, it was a two bedroom apartment, but this time at least there was like a guard outside. There was um, a garden outside. It was a full apartment. So there were other blocks of people around. Like, I don't know that at least always provides me a sense of safety, even though I'm living with someone inside. Yet, if anything happens, I can just shout and there'll be a guard outside, you know, anything like that. So um, I did that again for like, somewhere close to like two years and then I moved and by that time it was already COVID so when I was moving I had a, a, a I, I left the apartment as it is so that it could be an Airbnb or it can continue becoming an Airbnb even though I'm not around because again I could take care of um, housekeeping I could take care of guests coming in and out I could do all that because it was a home and um, I thought it could work left Arusha uh, it was COVID one and then I had an Airbnb that was not working in Arusha because COVID. There were still guests apparently. There were still guests, but it wasn't as fast as it is uh, currently. So I left the apartment and I had to like move everything back to Dar es Salaam until I got a I got a place to stay, of course, but it wasn't somewhere where I wanted to do Airbnb. So fast forward after COVID, uh, airports starts opening up and guests start coming again i started doing airbnb again so currently i have three okay i have two properties of my own that i host and then i have one property who i help someone co-host you can see this on my profile on airbnb you can see this on my profiles on booking.com you can see it everywhere so this is not something that i'm talking about that is a long term or i don't have experience and all that jazz basically well, that's a bit of the experience i've had with airbnb interesting fact i enjoy it gives me joy living with strangers
in my defense, we are just human beings. We go into this world and we are all um, finding ourselves and we are all like trying to figure out ourselves. And I think even the people who do bad things still have like a part of them that they can be kind. And I was listening to uh, Nambogo, um, a lady who has traveled to all countries in all, all, all countries. And she was saying how that's also what she has. And I realized that I'm not alone. If you, if you, if you meet a person and the first thing that goes on your mind is like they're kind, whoever the, the person is, whether Bora Bora or like whoever you meet and then you feel like, mm, I think they're kind. If that's the type of person you are, then I think you're the type of person to like try things. I think right now I can travel to the States and live with a stranger. I feel like I... I can do that. And again, think of these spaces as where Airbnb, they've already, if you're, if you're hosting on Airbnb, then that means they have uh, done the background check on you. So they have your IDs, they have your license, they have all the potential things that can identify who you are in any part. So imagine it's the same with host as well. And then they have a proven record. They have, I have at least 70 90 reviews that would tell you that it's okay to stay at my properties or it's okay to, to live with me as a host so i think the whole ecosystem just allows you to do that and it's just an interesting thing or at least i enjoy it so getting started with an airbnb getting started yourself if you're looking at this and you're like looking at it like um yeah i did an extra source of income i need to start uh learning about real estate i need all the jazz then um you can at any point in time you can very much try and start so i have always had these two these are two places that i put my listings in one is airbnb the other one is booking.com where how i look at it and the experience i've had is booking.com is where people find places like hotels and long-term stays and apartments and all that while airbnb has cutted itself around um innovative travelers and people who are here so that they can experience um they can have like actual contact with the local beats and they their, their traveling is different from uh, the other generations traveling so um i've hosted in both of them and my all listings are available on all of them but i i'm known or i do more of airbnb than i do with booking.com just because i've set my listings so that they can cut off for airbnb and not booking.com as much okay so first getting started getting yourself started on airbnb um you don't have to have a full equipped house you don't have to have uh everything in the apartment you just have to have an extra bedroom i know that some people are also doing it um if they have an extra camping or like those shackles where you can build it on the balcony or you can build it on a sitting room that's not the direction that i will take but the direction that i would advise you to take is if you have an extra room that you can accommodate and live with guests then that's a good place to start because it it's now showcases you everything on how first how to go on the app how to interact with guests what you need to know what you need to have before now you put all your junks and good money into like a full-on apartment that accommodates and does um, the whole business on itself. Um, getting started with Airbnb will require you to take um, create an account, take posts of the account, um, take good photos, quality photos, quality photos, quality photos is where I'm about because I think the only contact with this person you have Remember, they're moving from one country to another country. They're coming to your country and uh, they don't know you. They don't know where you're from. And they also don't know how the environment looks like. So you're the one who to tell them, how does the environment look like? Who are you? What, 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 what kind of person are you? And how does the place look like? Where am I sleeping? What type of sheets am I sleeping on? So I think the more quality your photos are, the better you are with dealing with clients because again you now have an upper point of like saying this is how the apartment looks like and this is how this is the places that you're going to stay and the airbnb app as well just 
pushes more listings where there are better quality photos than listings that have meh photos yeah you can take photos with your phone if you're an expert and you know how to take quality photos on your phone otherwise just get a photographer just get a very good photographer who's just going to take photos of the whole place and show the potential and all that your house has Whatever you have, I know you may think, oh, you need a blender, you need to be a washing machine, you need all the jazz. But I'll tell you right now that I have a listing that does not have um, a washing machine currently. There's one that has because it cutters like full house. And then there's another one that just doesn't have a washing machine. So you don't have to have everything while you start. Just start with where you're at. If you're comfortable at the place that you're living, then that means whoever is traveling can be comfortable with the place that they're living. Do not lie. Do not put anything that is not the actual reality because if someone travels all that way and comes and see that instead of you having like some comfy brown sofa sets you now have uh, some i don't know chairs or bench and it just doesn't showcase the reality of what you're having so first thing first just remember make good photos take quality great photos make sure your photos are peel uh, appeal to the client and also um, they have everything most of the times people ask on payment um, Airbnb takes three to four days to pay and they actually pay you through your normal bank account that you have so whatever bank account you have if you have CRDB you have an MB you have whatever bank account that you have they can actually pay you to your bank account it will take somewhere close to three to five days and there will be a charge because they're doing a wire transfer but otherwise you receive your payments card all other process when they are very simple and easy for you to do i have told people i've consulted and helped people build their airbnbs and it's very it's a very simple process sometimes you need to uh put it in a way that um, there are some tricks here and there tweaks here and there that you need an expert so that at least your listing will be showed to more people because again um high chances you can just build something and then it might not be showed to like a number of people so um consult me that's where i come in just consult me and i'll tell you i'll i'll just spoon over your whole account and tell you some of the things that you can change improve do or stuff like that that can help you okay the second or the second bit um is your setting your pricing the math that goes on in my head most of the times while setting up an airbnb is um think of it this way you have a this is a rental property and there are two ways of doing it if you have this is your house you don't have to pay your rent then that's even perfect because now that's your house you can price it the way you want but what i'm talking about here is something that's called airbnb arbitrage where you take a house you rent a house and then you now come and rent it to clients one you always have to remember the pricing strategy that has worked around and how much are you renting this apartment what are the whole costs that will take you for you to get to, to host someone so if it includes electricity if it includes data if it includes anything that's where now we set your prices so let's get an example this listing let's say costs me um 100 000 a month for every maintenance that i have to do so if someone is not inside then the rent uh, let's say electricity whatever it is will cost me let's say 100 so if it's 100 and your rental let's say rent per month is 80,000 and then 20,000 for like everything that happens that means for 100 100,000 every day of that listing how much does it cost for you to maintain that listing every day that if you come to a place where it costs let's say 30,000 a day then that means if you set a price that is 50,000 it's 60,000 that means you're making business with the um, extra amount of cash that you're making and uh, sometimes if you're doing it for your other room like what I've been doing in Arusha then it would mean how much do you want this house to pay your rent because for me that was what was paying my rent I did not have a rental amount because I had guests coming in and out who were paying the rent so you just put it in a manner that um works for you there are two platforms that i always advise people to use one is called air dna where it will showcase all um other listings around you and it will also give you like a picture of prices around you and tell you how much worth your apartment will cost so if you're renting out a room it will also tell you how much the room is going or can go for 
considering things that are around you. So listings that are around you, listings that are around your country, listings that are somewhere close in proximity and all that will just be um, well seen through AirDNA. Uh, the cheap version or like the free version can give you half of the things or can give you all that you need while you're starting because i've used the free version for the, as long as i can remember but um, if you want now some more features on how to calculate revenue calculate money do finances and all that then you have to pay for the for the uh for the platform but otherwise air dna is always my go-to and if you go to it you just figure out how many things how many listings are around you how much they're making currently and it will showcase how much your house can actually cost if you decide to do Airbnb. The second bit is always Airbnb as the app itself. So um, there's a new feature that has happened over the past few months where you can just search in your normal search engine where are actual of the places or around you and Bazo and what do they have different. So let's say I live in Upanga. What is around me in Upanga? If a guest searches Upanga right now, what are they going to get and how are the prices? Which that would be a bit manual, but then you can go about it and see what is the potential around you. And if it would cost you or if it can cost you anything, then that's the direction that you'll take. So it's very much dependent on what you have and um, what you want to do, pretty much pretty much um i've had interesting clients to be honest i've had interesting clients i've had a lady uh this one lady who was from kenya at some point and then she stayed with me for i think two three months and then afterwards her time was up so she was supposed to be leaving but then she didn't want to leave so um and it wasn't so much on me because at some point she ended up staying in the streets she ended up and it was bad she was suicidal and i've i've had i've had experience i've had experience <laughs> i've had experience but well 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 it's the good is better than the bad that what i would say every business has a bad bit and i think i've grown to a place where now i have a full-on house that i don't live in but then they, there could be guests who live together or coexist together and that's also something that i do so there are two ways of doing it one you can just get a whole house uh rent it add value to it because I really want to put it out there you just don't rent a house and then say oh yeah this is fully furnished this is all that i'm going to do i'm not going to do anything i'm just going to put it on Airbnb. add value to it because remember this guest can come in they want to study they want to rest they want their homely house they want their yeah they just want to be in a beautiful place so even though you rent out let's say um, a fully furnished apartment yet still try to see what do you have to get bin bugs um do you have to add things on the balcony do you just add value to the apartment for it to make sense for you to do business so airbnb arbitrage basically what that means is you rent houses so that you can rent them out makes sense makes sense and i know the first question that you're thinking is uh, will the landlord agree to that depends with whoever that landlord is i like to have that discussion with my landlords early on like i'll tell them that i am going to rent your house and i do this type of hosting for short-term leases and long-term leases i am going to take a responsibility of anything that's going to happen but i would guarantee you that it's very secure and i've done this for at least six years and it works and uh i would love to do this in your apartment so we would have that on the on the contract he would be aware he would like have all that aware but then again if you do that that means just get a get an apartment add value to it like ba -ba boom it boom, boom, boom like do something to it because your pictures is what's gonna sell you so if your apartment is just like meh that means it's going to be like meh if your apartment is like oh then that means that's how it's going to be taken by clients so that's what airbnb arbitrage is and there's so much resources these days out there there's so much people talking about it there's so much places that you can learn about it i am here and uh you can learn about it so that was the first bit i think i've explained so much of what you should know if you want to get started with airbnb the next bit would be now some of the benefits that you can get doing airbnb first benefit for me would be networking i have met i don't know i've already hosted at least over 700 
700, 600, somewhere there. Somewhere there over the past six years because I've been hosting uh, potentially over the first six, first six years. But then again, I've hosted like three years and then took a pause for COVID and then hosted again. This is now my second year. So I've hosted and I've stayed, I've lived, I have um, had interactions with a number of people. A number of people. Like I'll tell you, I've had high class mid class i've had i've had all type of people and meeting travelers has a different type of like it just it it improves your mind at some point because remember if you meet someone who's like yeah you do like normal life with it's different with someone who has decided to take a backpack and travel or someone who has uh, decided to leave their country and then come to your country so that they can find opportunities. I've lived with, a, with an Ugandan, um, hi Brian. <laughs> I've lived with an Ugandan guy who came to Tanzania and he had so much, like he was seeing opportunities left, right, center. And he always kept on telling us that uh, you Tanzanians, you don't see what you guys have, but you have so much, you have so, so, so so much and he he made ventures he has opened ventures he has opened different things he has opened he has done a number of things in tanzania and he was always on and off on and off and or in and out in and out and most of the times we would stay together and would have chats he helped me out with a number of things i really like i've met i've met people i've met people i've met a lady who was um who what are the what are those what are they called was a pilot and she had done piloting in a number of countries. She has passed different studies and she made me understand that pilots are literally counted by their hours. So if you, the experience you have, instead of you saying you have like six years of experience, they'll tell you they have 20,000 hours of flying. And I was like, I was amazed. I have met, let me see. I intend to write a book. <laughs> I intend to write a book about uh, the experiences that I've had, the people I've met through Airbnb. I've had, oh gosh, I've had a number of people. And it's it's always interesting when you live with them. It's not as much. These days, because I have like another apartment that I do Airbnb, it's not that interesting because why? Why am I not living with clients? <laughs> but I've, okay, so one of the clients that I recently met is if you stay at my apartment for like uh, two weeks or and we get to interact, get to meet, I will take you up for ice cream, at snow cream, I'll take you out for coffee, I'll take you out for, for different type of things just because I really, um, I really think we're in this world because for a main purpose and our purposes are always met by destiny helpers, people who can actually craft your story and um, either inspire you bless you or motivate you towards the right direction so i always open myself up to meet a lot, number of people and i think i i collect so much stories i collect so much experiences by just doing that and that will be my first benefit of airbnb like really the people that you get to meet ah just chef's kiss you just get to anyways i was speaking about the lady that i met of recent she was telling me how, and I think she gave me all that I needed to start traveling. She was telling me how she had a, a decision and she made a decision with God that, dear God, this, I really, really, really love traveling. And because I love traveling, I wish to be traveling all the time. But then again, I've been working for like over six, seven years. And whenever I get paid, this money just goes to some of the things that, um, are not that interesting you know like i do them so that i can survive but they're not that interesting and then she agreed with her god that listen i'm just going to break the bank and then i'm going to travel to three places only three i'm going to give myself to three places and then after those three places i expect you to now help me out and give me the ideas the opportunities that will allow me to travel and her life changed like her life just she she was traveling she was meeting people she was telling me how she was coming in contact with like different communities different but like it was it was very it was very nice and it was very eye-opening and i really love that for her and i really love that i got to start traveling last year so yeah 
first that's the first benefit that's the first benefit the second benefit this is the second source of income and i take it as an investment mechanism and not uh, so much of the business aspect just because uh, i think i've not given it my 100 percent to call it a business but it's my investment and i will i tell my friends who are also in the corporate world then just think of it this way every year just buy or get another property just add another property in your portfolio a month you can make as much as you want you can make from the high ends which is like from 3 million 5 million you can make um somewhere like 200 300 like you can make an extra income this is you getting to host people and adding value to people so yeah it it, it apologies everything went off my mic my like everything just went off so i don't know if i should start from the beginning or just end where i success tips for my fellow hosts i think the first thing that you should take on is a uh, good communication with your clients and um for starters in your first month second month third month maybe you can add a place where people can always answer or share with you actual feedbacks on what do they wish to find when they come back in because remember you already have a house that you think is comfortable for you but maybe for someone else that would prefer having like a different scent or um different or refresher or like different they they just have different everyone is just different and they would love something else so if they give you a compliment perfect but then if also they give you like a good feedback that would work for you it's also nice to take in and uh, to take in consideration that that's something that someone else would think of. So um, improve your apartment according to the feedbacks that you get. And these don't have to always be reviews So because not all clients will give you reviews. I mean, I go out, I travel, and it's not all the time that I'll give on reviews. So it's nice if you actually text this client, if you have their numbers already or still in the apps and airbnb apps and all that you should text them and ask them of their actual feedback on how you think you can improve the place and i think that has worked for me so much and it has helped me notice some of the things that i would fix early because a client highlighted or showcased or like told me that it was a bit of a bother so i recall there was there's a chair and um, a seat to for you to sit in the in the rooms and then this guest was telling me how uh, it's not so comfortable if you're working for a long time and it's easier if i would change the tables and then after i changed like a few months later someone else just came in and then told me that it was complimented on the fact that the sitting area was a comfortable area so remember if i did not take that feedback high chances i couldn't be at a place where um uh, i could receive comments or feedback one thing that i always say i don't know why but i think most hosts always take airbnb or short-term leases as they're doing you a favor or like they're doing a client a favor but i don't think that's always the case i mean we are all on different angles here i am looking for a place to stay and uh, you're looking to make income so i think we should all treat each other well well and you as a business owner you should actually treat your client better i don't know i think maybe with the whole idea of airbnb it has made us think like ah no you're doing whoever a favor and maybe because it's your like potential extra income then you don't have to treat them well but i don't believe in that i think you should take in more courage and more and i need to even take consideration of these clients because like all that can happen in the mid so i think it's as important for you to take more consideration of the client and always understanding combat you are the business owner they're the client they're still supposed to be treated as queens and kings and all that so um that's the thing that i think um, my fellow hosts <laughs> can uh take uh, consideration in the third in is um i hope you mention all relevant information that the client needs to have if you have um a text that you would um allocate them to arrive at your home if you have something that will allow them to do a check-in and check out well if you have um better reviews of different places that they can visit around the country, around the area that you're in. If you have uh, where there's a nearby shopping center, then it's a, there's a nearby supermarket, then you're better off to just put all that information so that they know where to access this information. Because again, just remember that I've had clients who speak fluent French and they don't know Swahili. So imagine if I had not given them all these needs and goodies, then it would have been a bit hard for them to get around. So it's easy for you to just put all this information. And there's some information that would look like, um, that's normal news. That's like, 
there's Uber everywhere, but no, there isn't Uber everywhere. There is no Uber in Mauritius. There wasn't Uber in Mauritius. See? See? So it's not everywhere. <laughs> All I'm saying is everywhere is different. So something as a normal information, like uh, there's Uber and Bolts around, you can actually have these apps and order food, order what. It's something that would really help this client up because um, they really wish to have a comfortable stay at your at your place. Um, the last thing is I really wish for all of us to have like a hosting space where we meet and talk and do what because I think there's so much experiences that we can share together and I hope we get to do that at some point. So if you're a host and you would love to be in our, I have a hosting community. If you would love to be in our small hosting community that we share clients. So sometimes I have a client who would stay there for long and they would want to come back to my place, but I don't, I'm booked for those days. Then I'll just give to a hosting or another, uh, another hosting person because I know who they are and I know that they provide good services. So it's easy to have like a community that would share clients together because the market is still huge and the there's not as much Airbnbs. That's a secret. Come, come, come. Let me tell you the secret. <laughs> the hosting space is really growing. And I think if you want to start an Airbnb, then this is your time. This here is your moment. So yeah, I hope I've shared everything I know. If not, just ask questions. I can do as many videos about Airbnb and short-term leases as possible. If you have any questions, I do three things. First, I do have a place that I host. I do have uh, listings on Airbnb and Booking.com that I would really love to host you at any time. If it's you, your cousin, your brother, your parent, whoever, just welcome to my place and I would really love to host you. Second, I do provide co-hosting services. So if you have rental properties and you really want to do Airbnb, but you don't have the time, you don't have the space, you don't have anything that will take for you to host or for you to put this these um, apartments on short-term rentals, I would gladly do that for you. I've already created like a whole ecosystem that works for me. So I have people who are going to respond to text. I have people who are going to do housekeeping. I have people who are going to um, make sure you, uh, your, your whole apartment is well kept or like you're, you're on all these uh, listing places, you're on all these listing platforms and you get clients and most times I'll teach you how to have an 80% occupancy because that's what I always have. So I'll teach you all that and I'll give you like a whole um, consultation that sh for you to like improve. So if you are, you have rental properties and you're looking for someone to like take care of them. Third, the third thing that I do, I consult for people who want to do Airbnbs. So if you want or in your thinking to venture out into this business, I do provide consulting services. I will tell you, we'll do a meetup, a fast catch up so that you get to tell me what you want, when and where and how it can happen. You can email me, you can send me an email and I'll be very fast to respond to you and tell you uh, the exact timings that would work for all of us so that we can meet and then I can consult and tell you how and where you can invest your money if you want to do Airbnb. But in case of anything, I am your queen babe. I am your Airbnb host. I am your great, great, great Airbnb host. I love hosting and I hope I get to host as many people as possible. I hope I still get to meet as many people out there. And um, till next time. <laughs>